Good, good talk. Oh, I see what you did there. Good talk. Lift your hands, baby. Welcome to another episode of Good Talk with Good People. My name is Haley Hacker, and today I have a very special guest. I'm very excited to introduce you all to a fabulous stand-up comedian, balloonist, clown, magician. He also hosts a really dope show called Hen Nights that you can totally tune into, and you should. Uh, I'd like to introduce you all to Steve Hen. Thanks for coming. Hey, thank you for inviting me, Haley. I am. Uh, quite nervous because I don't I'm not good at the other end I like to do all the talking so this would be fun for me because uh, I've got to answer questions and that's difficult for me sometimes <laughs> you you mentioned that I guess why why do you think oh let's start let's start deep why do you think that is why do you think that you know you're you're always kind of starting the questions versus you know being in the, the hot seat I, I that's what well, that is too deep and it's very it's a good question to start with i like oh, i'm in control when i can i can push people away i suppose and i do my um i do my thing but when people ask me questions i have to stop and i have to think about it and think because yeah. i don't <laughs> i just get on and i don't think when i do my shows that's yeah. it i know where i'm going boom but but if you come in and ask me a question i think oh that's me now i have to sort of answer the question so uh, it is it's all right but I have to double think when people ask me questions. That's so interesting. When I'm when I'm running a show, I can just just carry on doing yeah. it. I just feel that I'm giving away too much of my life when people ask me questions. Oh my gosh, you're such are you a very secretive person? Like you have a lot of privacy. No, no. I, I'm not secretive as such. I just I don't know. You see, I'm allowed to think normally. And that's my life. But when somebody else says, well, what's this mean? What's that mean? I don't actually stop and think about it. When people say, have, have, have you having a good day? And I have to tell them the truth. <laughs> I have to say, well, no, this has really pissed me off or that's happened and I really don't like it. Instead of saying, yeah, it's great. I've had a good day. Yeah. So like when people ask me questions, I like to give them the proper the answer. answer. Yeah. But that's difficult because I give away a lot of myself, which I don't mind doing. It's just some people think well, that's a bit. I didn't ask that question. I just wanted a yes or no. Yeah. So I, I might just end up just talking too much. No, you're all fine. However much you talk is perfect. Um, if you if you go off the the rambles and you're hitting like a thirty minute set, uh, <laughs> I'll give you the light. Don't worry. But <laughs> um, okay. no, it's it's interesting that you say that because I find potentially it's because of the pandemic or whatever. I find that some of my relationships are kind of like Peter right? And I'm like, why is that? Like friends that I've known for years. And I'm like, why is that? And I realized we, we've all kind of started to lie about how we are. You know what I mean? They're like, mm -hmm. hey, how are you? Just do a little check in. Hey, how are you? And people are like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And it's almost like, I, maybe this is a personal experience, but I kind of feel like a lot of people have gone through this where there's like a numbness to the pandemic because there's such a like, like ordinariness to every day. There's such a uh, dullness almost every day. Cause it's not like, yeah. you know, I'm not like going out to, to strip clubs or to like comedy shows or going internationally or anything. I don't have interesting stories. So it's not like, I'm like, Hey, yeah, this, let, let me tell you about this hot guy or something like that. Like I have to do internal introspection to say anything of value. And even if like a person who I love wants to hear that because if a person I love wanted to tell me things, I'd be like, yes, we don't necessarily apply that to ourselves. So I don't know. I'm trying to be more vulnerable. It's funny because I realized this yesterday. So that's why I'm like, yeah. oh, it's cool that you are making the active uh, choice to be vulnerable when you're answering the questions and be honest. Because I think so many people just don't. And like that disables connection right if you're yeah, not yeah. vulnerable then there's like there's nothing to really know like you don't learn anything about each other if you're just like oh yeah no script. that's it. that's probably why i don't like doing it but i i can't stop myself giving when people ask me questions like and and it might be interesting to see how, how far this goes but you're right about the numbness of life at the moment mm -hmm. it is people's I, people are finding their own ways to deal with it obviously they are and and like to me nothing really much has changed because my life normally was 80 percent staying at home and then going out the 20 percent of the time but i miss i miss people not so much 
not because some most people are horrible let's be honest but like <laughs> I don't miss <laughs> I don't disagree I, I miss don't. yeah I know I don't miss the, I, I'd like the contact with people I like people coughing over me normally it's like it's all right yeah you're but like, like oh, I, humanness yeah <laughs> that's that's just, you, know, you go up to the bar and somebody knocks you and you go you but I'd like that now I'd like someone to knock a drink out my hands just so I could moan at that yeah. So, so all that closeness has gone, and and that's that's interesting to deal with, yeah. and and you do, you do, I do like the way it's, it. We're all dulled. It's like numb. We're in a we're in a permanent cocoon. But it's getting better though. Is it? It's better for you in America. Yeah. I mean, I'm half. Well, uh, I don't know. There's too many idiots for me to say that global, like like as a country, we are better because uh, you know there's. Mm people who don't believe in wearing a mask or getting a vaccine or caring about other people's comfort and that's intense um but no we're we're getting vaccines mm. and that's kind of cool um I, I think it's interesting what you said about like missing someone like knocking you you know what i mean like in a bar or something yeah. I, how do you feel like typically like before the pandemic how did you feel in crowded spaces well see that's the thing i didn't like them but oh, I miss yeah. them. So, uh, you know, I don't, I mean, a crowded place is, I can cope with them and it doesn't, you know, I don't go, ah, go away. But like, it's, you know, the, the six people in front of you, if you drink, you've got to stand there and wait. But yeah. I'd rather there was like one person in front of me for a drink. But now I'd, I'd be quite happy for, for six people to stand in front of me yeah. and wait for a drink, just, just so I could be in that room. For sure. So that's, that's a weird thing. But I, yeah, I mean, I don't mind crowds. I love going to, to concerts and gigs and, and, and having sweaty people like push yeah, you around. I but, like that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't like the waiting that is involved when there's a lot of people around. That's all. I, I like the people, but I don't like the waiting. That's fair. I'm always, I'm a very short person. So I've always been able to kind of like MacGyver myself up to the front very easily. Um, but no, I've, I've always liked the compactness of crowds, you know, the kind of like, mm. I'm the opposite of a claustrophobic, I'm agoraphobic. So when everyone's packed in, I'm like, oh, yes, it's safe. And like, there's like human touch and stuff, which I know like might sound weird in the before times, but now we're all like, I get it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So it's weird that we're like, but, oh yes, I want to be in these, what, you know, were things I wouldn't want to be in before just because there are people there. That's yeah, that's, I, I went to see Lady Gaga. Uh, when she was here oh, on my great. own and like I got as close as I could there was three stages in the middle of the arena and I got as close as I could to one of them because I couldn't get as close to the other and like I loved it because like I love that sort of closeness with people it sounds weird now that sounds weird but like no it's nice that sort of thing and I miss I miss concerts so much yeah. Oh my gosh the sound of like just really loud music like when it's so loud you can feel it in your body and there's something so beautiful yes. about that. How was that concert, though, with Lady Gaga? Uh, it, off the walls. Yeah, well, I was the second time I've seen her, and it was the second night in the UK, and it and she had to cancel it uh, the next night. She did an, another night in Birmingham, and she had to cancel it because of her, is it a neuralgia that she has? So she was in a lot of pain. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she, she filmed it for a DVD, which has never been released. But she was brilliant. She was I love her on many levels, but she did this one song and it technically went wrong. And she went, stop. And she told everyone in her crew, everybody that she was going to do it again because she was filming it and she wanted it to be right. So we'd have to reset. And I'm sorry for everybody else backstage. So I've got to do extra work. And she just, and she started to chat to the crowd and say, look, I'm going to have to wait for this because we've got to reset the whole thing with the, the lighting rig and everything else. And I thought, God bless you. Because if you're in charge of your own destiny when you're when you're on stage, um, good for you. And she did the whole thing again, and it and it looked so much better. To be fair, she was. Really? I mean, she knew what she was doing. What but, was the yeah. difference technically? Was it just like what occurred that wasn't right? Ah, uh, <laughs> it had like a, yeah. a, a three gangways going up and down at the back. Okay. And so she had to climb up one and there's screens behind it. So the gangways were moving up and down, but they hadn't moved during the song. So she was just oh. down there. So it did visually look so much better that, that all these gangways were moving behind her. There you go. I bet that's interested many people. That has. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. She's so 
she's so multifaceted, you know, and like her talent and in her interests and her personality and just like the way she's changed over the years. You know, I watched that yes. with Lady Gaga about, you know, how she had the pain all over and she had to get massages all the time, which didn't seem mm. too bad as far as pain management goes. I would not mind having a personal masseuse anytime. Just, hey, just feel like pain. But I know she needs it. It's different, right? But um, do, do you- she does need, But it, it seemed that she was very tough. Sorry, I over-, I over but no, her, no, no. her masseuse seemed very tough. And I, I think I would, you know, I said, yeah, all right, then I'll do it. You know, because <laughs> she seemed like she was in charge of the masseuse, which is good, I think. Yeah. Do you want to be that way oh. on stage? No, 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 it's fine. I, I blame Zoom lags. <laughs> yes. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, there was a guy I, I was meant to have on the show last week, two weeks ago, and he didn't manage to do a technical with me. And I thought something was wrong. And, and all I got was like a spinning wheel on the night. Uh, and it's just, I don't, it's better than it was. Gee, I mean, it was much, you know, we've learned to live with, with videos and, and microphones. I know, I know. What is the first thing you're going to do once you can, you know, go like lamp holes and do whatever the hell you want outside? Well, when we're allowed, when yeah. we're allowed to go out and do anything we want. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to watch a box set of VR. What is <laughs> a box set of VR, like virtual reality? I'm going to sit, I'm going to, no, ER, ER, not the ER. Um, it's a nursing, it's an American nursing uh, doctor's uh, oh. emergency, the emergency room uh, from 86. And uh, that was my attempt at a joke that I'm going to do exactly what I've been doing for the last six months. So I'm going to sit at home and watch a box set. That was the joke, but that didn't work. So. Uh, you, that was funny though. My daughter's, my daughter's just, uh, just before you uh, got in touch with me, uh, my daughter just FaceTimed me from a pub outside with her friends in Birmingham, and she's absolutely rat assed. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I want, because I, I do meet my daughter, but I can't give her a hug and I can't, yeah. you know, we just say bye and off we go. So, like, we used to meet up regularly for a, a meal and a drink. And uh, it's, this is probably a bad thing for a father to say, but, but I do like it when my daughter's drunk. <laughs> really? Why so? Well, she's good at it. She's not like, um, she's, a, you know, she's fine. It's just, um, she, she gets very, she doesn't like other people to know that she's drunk. I said, well, that's, we all do it. I said, it's your age, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, to say that I like, it, it means I don't object to her being drunk. It's probably a better word rather than oh. saying I like I her. I you like, drunk. I prefer when my daughter is drunk. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Rationalize this for what reasons? Is she very funny when she's drunk or, <laughs> or what? No, <laughs> like, no. No, no. She's very good at maths when she's drunk. That, that's what she did her degree in is maths. And like, she's very good at that. She's still, she, <laughs> she went and got some fr uh, fried chicken and they, they overcharged her. She went straight back in and told him exactly how much it cost, even though she was drunk. Exactly. They gave her her money back. And I thought, fair play. Good on but no, I, I, yeah, it's not that I don't. Yeah, it's right. I don't. It's because she she feels guilty that she, when she's drunk because it's I'm a dad but like it's fine we we all got drunk yeah. so uh, that's that's probably what I meant no for sure I don't know if I've ever been drunk around my parents at all I know I've been high around my parents and that like one time I came home <laughs> duh, duh, freaking I... blazed and like I remember <laughs> I was in high school and I thought I was so good at hiding it. And I was like in the kitchen chilling. And I remember my mom just being like, could you try to not act high for a second? Like, <laughs> I felt so caught and I started laughing. I was so embarrassed. And she was like, could you just try, you know? I went right to my room. <laughs> try not to be high. Yeah, try not to be, I'm like, I am high right now. I'm so sorry, like marijuana. I wasn't like doing crack or anything like that. Or like- Oh, well, that's all right. I, I'd yeah. feel better in, in that respect. I, I think, I don't know. There seems to be more of a, a laissez-faire. There's a word I'm just throwing in uh, in America to 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 to, to drugs and and uh, especially marijuana, mari marijuana, as you used to say yeah. over here. Uh, in fact, I did marry a juana, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a uh, I'm sorry, that's a cute. <laughs> oh, marijuana! I did marry juana. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Girl. Yeah, her name was Joanna. Yeah, so I married a Joanna. Oh, look at that. Was it, did you guys spend a lot of time high at the wedding? Because that would have been one appetite. 
no yeah no 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 but we're not i was gonna say we don't we're not we're not as casual about drugs over here mm -hmm. it's well maybe <laughs> maybe yeah, the, okay. the society i grew up in but no I, I, it's it's all very it's like oh I was gonna, it's like sex see we're very uptight in england about sex and i think we're the same with 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 class a drugs i mean that's fair i mean I'm, i don't know I feel like I've met people um, from the UK who are very casual about like ketamine. And that's like not something we're casual about in America. I feel like just a K hole casual. Like that's all we're straight guys. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. Did you, did you, yeah. No, my, my, just my phone's gone off and I just turned it off because I thought that was very rude. Um, so I don't know if that's just spoiled anything. I just missed the last bit you said because I was trying to turn it off subtly. Well, you did a fantastic. And then I dropped it. <laughs> so no, you what you said uh, about Americans think English oh. people. Did you say? Well, I've just heard a few English people like do ketamine and stuff, and they're very casual about it. You know, and that's just not. Oh like, no, yeah. Casual. Horse drugs are okay. Yeah. It, it, yeah, tranquilizers and that. That's all right, but cannabis. <laughs> No, I think <laughs> over, I don't know. See, I don't you see because I'm older now. I'm older, but I I don't I don't know. I don't know if it is as I'm not sure because I'm not down with the kids as much. And I'm sure the young people do do it. Yeah. But because uh, I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. It wasn't out and about later. It wasn't casual. So no it was all very very hidden see that's what i was because like we had to make sure no one knew that we were uh so that's why i was interested about you because you seem quite cool that your mum was okay with you but not sort of happy that you were showing it showing signs of of, of marijuana yeah i mean i don't think anyone in my family like everyone i i, I think both my parents have spoke you know, can't confirm or deny, but I think I'm pretty sure. So they're not going to get on me about anything they've done. You know what I mean? Um, no. But like when I was doing it in high school, it was the same kind of like shady, like shady situations. You know what I mean? It's like you call a guy as a friend of the guy to the guy that you know, maybe and you like pull up to their house and they sit in your backseat, even though you didn't want them in your car in the first place. And then you guy do like a shady deal type thing and then you smoke in the woods. Um, and then there's a lot of driving involved too when it's like you're being shady, unfortunately, which is like worse. Um, but I, I I live in LA now, so I guess it is like far more casual. But I guess like the conversations too are more casual. Like one mm. of my grandmothers is taking like CBD gummies every day, <laughs> so I'm like and trying to push it on people. Like hey, you should really like <laughs> CBD gummy. I give it to my dog, and I'm like this is too. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. No. Yeah, yeah. That dog is chill. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be hilarious. Just putting up a paw going, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, CBD doesn't get you high. It just makes you go, oh, oh, that, because oh, that relax. <laughs> you know. Um. So I do want to ask you. You know, because I we've just been chit chatting about all the stuff, drugs and doctors being drunk. Yeah. yeah. You know, what else? I'm deflecting your questions. That's what it is, isn't it? I'm just not giving you any answers. No, I mean we're you That's... know we're just chatting. It's it's a good it's a good thing I think. But I, I do want to ask mm. you, how did you get into the crazy world of entertainment, right? Like how did you get into like oh. and ballooning and stand up and all that? When did that start for you? That's a that see that's I the clowning I know because that happened just before my son was born, which was twenty seven years ago. So I I know that. But I was doing entertaining before that. I was doing a lot of drama. At, not at school, but at some point, I think because I was quite a shy person, I think that's what it was. And my my dad either made me or drove me to the middle of Birmingham, left me there. No, drove me to the middle of Birmingham, and uh, I was a joke. And there was a there's a big theatre in Birmingham called the Birmingham Rep, and it's a, a lovely, lovely theatre. And um, they did uh, acting sessions on a saturday for young people i was a young person obviously but i can't for the life of me think how old i was i'm gonna say 
because I went on, I, I eventually started going on the bus on my own. And I, I'm not sure if 12 years old is too young to be going on the bus on your own, but that was like 70s. So it probably was okay. So I think it was about when I was 12, I was, I started to do drama at the Young Rep. And then I joined another drama society. And I think it helped me now, maybe I was yeah, 14, 15, because I was rubbish at school because I was very shy and I wouldn't do, the, the person you're talking to now would not be the person to, that would talk to you at 15. I would not be that person, mm. but right. I have got a lot more confident. Okay, like you're just very, very shy and kind of like, you know concave type thing yeah yeah i was i was i was this and i you know if a teacher asked me a question <laughs> i would go i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to talk but the, the people i was doing drama with were all teachers mm -hmm. so it made me look at so so my last year at school i was a bit of a twat i'm gonna be honest <laughs> I, was, I, <laughs> I decided to rebel on the last year at school rather than doing it early on but that was that was the drama side of it so I always wanted to do acting yeah and I and I, I used to go away in the summer to do festivals and I did some Shakespeare plays and some other really good stuff and I really enjoyed that and and that was always my focus but then I got jobs along the way that sort of stopped me like working in a hospital for seven years stopped me doing a lot oh wow what did um, you do in the hospital I was a brain surgeon <laughs> are you being serious no, I'm lying. Okay. No, I was. <laughs> I'm, what do you, so do you call them? I'm so. Oh, gullible. bless you. Is an issue. Do I? Do I look? Do I look? I don't know. But no, I was. I think you call them orderlies in America. A porter. Not. A I don't even know the meaning of that word. Oh gosh, pushing people around on trolleys and wheelchairs okay. um, was basically the title of my job as a, a, a hospital porter. So. Uh, it was great though. I was really, I really enjoyed it. I met some be beautiful, beautiful people. Um, I'm still friends with a few of these beautiful people, which is nice because that's 30, 30, can I swear? 30 yeah, long no, time. 30, 30 years ago. It's like a long time, but I'm still friends with a, with a couple of, they were great nurses though. They were, they were good, good caring people. But I, I, I sat there on my last few months as, as a porter and, and all these old men were porters and there was me at 27 I think I was and uh, <laughs> I looked around I thought I'm going to stay here for the rest of my life if I don't do something so I just left I just gave my notice in the next day and uh, I left the hospital for good wow. and, and, and went out to be an actor on my own and that didn't really work but I did enjoy myself for a long time why did it not work necessarily well because i wasn't successful obviously okay. <laughs> i wanted to be you know so it was difficult i did lots of stuff i did a really good show about um rudolf hess i did a one-man show about rudolf hess so i was on stage for an hour and a half on my own and I, I, a lot of people say it was the best thing i'd ever done but that's because i had nobody else to fuck it up that's <laughs> is it online a... no real... no no god this is this is before vhs Oh my you, god! You, you MPEGs. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I mean, it's just hopeful because you just said it's the best thing. You know, people say it's the best thing I've ever done. Oh no. Of course, I'm like, well, you know, we'd love to see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a natural. No, you know? I, I, there is a video. There was a videotape made one day of of the show, and I've I've tried for ages to try and find it and track it down, but no luck. No. I mean, it's like your next, you know, you still have like a, a better thing to put out. So like the world's like, no, 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 don't be satisfied. <laughs> Steve, you got more. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. You know? there, I, there was one review which said that they thought I was too young to play the character, which is true. I'd be better at it now. I don't know if I'd be better at it because I might be more nervous to do a one man show about Rudolf Hess. I don't know. I have to admit my ignorance right now. I don't. I don't know who Rudolf Hess is. Um, That's all right. He was. He was Hitler's uh, number. Number two, I think. So he came over to England to to try and um, broke a peace with Winston Churchill, mm. and uh, 
Yeah, I should know a lot more because I, I should know everything about Rudolf Hess. <laughs> Uh, there wasn't a Q&A after but, the <laughs> Well, no, no, because I, I hung myself on stage at the end. Oh, well, you uh, should have the end. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and the director said, do you want to come out for a bow? I said, it'd be stupid. I said, it's a really powerful play. Because Hess had recently died when we did the play. He'd actually hung himself in prison anyway, because he was in prison for, for years. And uh, I thought, it, I can't come out and, and people clap. Yeah. If I've just Die. hung myself, and 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 I thought, no, I can't. It just it it, and it also it stopped people having a release as well, which I thought was quite good because like when they clap, they go, oh, that's all right. I don't have to worry about all that hard stuff I've just listened to. Mm -hmm. That's so. really smart. You have a lot of integrity to the character, you know, in that way. Yeah, and I I, I pretend to I, I prefer to hide behind my characters rather than be me. I suppose as well, because I don't want to come out and people say, oh, it's you, it's you, Steve, rather than it's you, Mr. Hess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. that's interesting. I mean, we can all put on different masks and it's like, it is a little easier, right? Like, I don't, I think about that with comedy too, just with stand up. It's like, you know, we are kind of exaggerated versions of ourselves, even if we don't necessarily see it. Like at first, yeah. you, you would say on stage, oh my God, I would never say to a person's face, typically, typically. Yeah, yeah. You, know, or you just get so psychotic that you would, or crowd work, crowd work is bizarre because you wouldn't do it in a grocery store. Well, you wouldn't. <laughs> you do? You're like, girl, are you using my, my, <laughs> my, If I'm out with my children, they go, dad, shut up. Don't talk to these people because I, but that's because I will have a conversation with people. If people serving me and, and I say, thank you. And they ask me, I will talk to them yeah. because, and my children go, don't, why? They don't want to know about your life. It's nice to say things to people. Yeah. Well, no, I, that's pleasant. Right. And that's like, yeah, it's not, it's not, I mean, I'm not doing crowd work, but my children think I am, I think yeah. is what I'm saying. Well, you're not like sneaking into people's carts and like, you know, doing a, doing a haul for them, you know, you're not like commenting on their hairstyles and, you know, you're not roasting them publicly. No, um, no. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I might, I might try that. Well, I've not been shopping for a year. Like we've got click really? and collect. I, I suppose it's the same thing, isn't it? It's like order online and then you can go and pick it up outside somewhere. That's amazing. Yeah, we don't, we're, we brave it out. We head to the, the stores and cover our faces and we distance and pick things up but you know sometimes I did I, I was very jealous I saw this woman in Lassen's um which is a grocery store very nice grocery store we were I, I feel the need for anyone who knows <laughs> what yeah if, anyone who knows we were just visiting okay we don't regularly shop at Lassen's but we were there and she was the the funniest person I've ever like seen and I don't know who she was but she commented on everything and she got it to the point where it's like everyone was watching her almost like a show. Like everyone in the grocery store was like captivated by what she was doing. And I was like, what is that? What, who, leave LA. I don't need this, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't need this. And I was just sitting there with my boyfriend like, I don't understand what <laughs> like, this is magic. You know what I mean? Cause she was, she was like kind of doing crowd work with everyone. And she like, she was really old like like really actually you know and she like came up to us and was like ah oh, you guys are young start you know start drinking this soon take it from me i'm like 95 and we're like what wow. she's making us recommendations <laughs> like it was very interesting <laughs> and she dropped the apple it was apple cider vinegar she dropped it on the floor by accident and then it became a whole to do oh. you know and she was like oh it's so oh, that would smell oh yeah it smelled horrible it smelled yeah, horrible. Yeah. It was very entertaining. So I was, I was like, is he doing that in grocery stores? Like, are you, you know, dropping things and like, you know, like a clown suit and close up magic type thing. So tell me when, um, when did the magic and the stand up come into the story? Right. So you were doing acting, oh. you did a one man show, um, and then when did you go? I want to be fun. from from being Hitler's second man. When were you like jokes? <laughs> joke i've always oh that's a bad thing to say i was going to sit there and say i've always been funny mm. and that's that's a big thing it's a bold thing to say but i I've, to say that i've always been funny is probably a little, i've always been happy i've always made sure that i i am happy even in the dark times 
I'm still happy because you, you, you've got to be in my in my in my reality. I'm, I'm you know, so I was always happy and I always want weirdly. There was a couple of comedians on British TV called Morecambe and Wise who who are probably, you know, some of the greatest. Well, Eric Morecambe probably one of the greatest and um, used to love watching them every Christmas. They do a Christmas special. And and I always I loved the fact that I was laughing and I wanted to make people laugh because I know how good I feel when I laugh. Yeah. So so I, and I and I also my dad used to take me to the circus a lot. So I always wanted to be a clown weirdly, but I never thought of it that I wanted to be a clown and I wanted to be a comedian. I just wanted to make people laugh and I wanted to be a clown. But I didn't think I didn't want to be a clown in a circus. Um, I just but so that's not the answer to the question, but it's the start. So I was doing some acting and then um, I, oh, we, we did some like, um, what do you call them? Like pageants, I suppose, where it would be like uh, knights fighting in, and people sitting around banquets. Banquets, you have those, don't you? Where you have, uh, and so like, it was like a Queen Elizabeth banquet and I was Queen Elizabeth. So I dressed up as Queen Elizabeth and, and we, it was like improvising with the with the audiences eating and, and there was musicians and there was knights fighting and, and we had a little play going on yeah. while they were all eating. And it was it was fun. And one of the guys that was there asked me if I would help. He just started this this art centre and they want to do children's parties. And he said, can you do a children's party? Because I know how good. I used to do lots of pantomimes and that, and I do work well with children. I do, I don't know. It's probably because I am such a kid inside that I understand children. Yeah. Or it could be that my, my sisters had nine nieces and I help look after them. I don't know what it is, but I do have an affinity with children. So I went, I got a book on magic and a book on uh, balloons. And Although I'd done magic with my dad a lot before he used to, his, his brother used to do magic and stuff. But um so I learned how to do a balloon poodle and, and I did a couple of magic tricks and uh, uh, I'd done some, some stand-up, to be fair, at, at the theatre. We did some comedy shows and I had this Spider-Man suit, <laughs> like material. So it was material with Spider-Man on yeah. that I had made into, into a jacket. So I used that and I did about six or seven uh, attempted uh children's parties for them and then it sort of grew from there because the government was giving us money to to set up as a self-employed person so i i, I started doing clowning as as uh, and getting paid to go into people's houses and entertain their children and do the magic so yeah. that's how i got into the into the clowning as such yeah i mean that's that's wild like it's so cool that like they're like hey you can you do this thing and you like rose to the occasion and turned out really well, right? Um, so how long have you been doing that now? Yeah, well, my son's just before my son was born, and he's ninety-four, so is he twenty-seven in in October? Okay, that's so cool. I think so. so you're like a seasoned years. clown, like <laughs> you know what I mean? You're you're very seasoned. Seasoned, clown. yeah, yeah. You have experience. So what is like? What is a uh, top clown tip? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's the thing yeah. about clowning that you're like, ah, this is this is a thing that is makes clowning awesome. Oh, okay, to make clowning awesome. I, I was thinking about because uh, the worst thing about doing children's parties is the parents. Yeah, I'll give you that. But uh, the best thing, oh, I, well. The first time I spent ages uh, working on, on ripping up a newspaper and then making it come back together magically in front of people. And I thought I'd done it so well. And the first time I did it, all the children go, I know how you do that. No. But they didn't. They didn't know. It's what children say. But I didn't know that. I thought I was rubbish. And like, that's, I would say that is the thing to take away with you. Children will say things that you think is true, but it's not that they think they know how you do it. They don't know how you do it. And they don't really, and they're not saying it because they're lying. They're just saying, I know how you did that. They don't. And, and that, that sort of, that's the thing you have to get over quite quickly is the fact that they don't know what you're doing. 
yeah. it's all right. But then it's experience. The more you do, I I was doing parties where I would just walk in and I'd do it on autopilot because I knew exactly how to treat everybody. The yeah. parties I enjoy, and they're good parties. They're great. I come away happy. The kids are happy. The bookers are happy. It's brilliant. But the parties I enjoy my, most is if there's a child in there that makes me work for my money. Oh, really? And they're the yeah, because I'm so oh, I'm so good at them. That's not the thing to say. I'm so seasoned. That's better, Haley. So <laughs> I I don't I like to work for my money. And if a child is giving me a hard time, I'm learning off that child. If that child is giving me such a hard time, I have to get them back on board and make them enjoy themselves. And that's fun because like I've then got that in the bank for the next party or the next child I meet that does that to me. So I do enjoy that side of it. I'm not sure if that's answered the question, but no, it went it off somewhere on a tangent. No, and it's, it's so cool that even you know, now after doing it for, for a good amount of time, like you're still learning constantly. I guess like as a, uh, as more of a stand up, my, my biggest curiosity around it is like, how, how the hell do you do clean comedy? Like my, nothing I do in stand up is going to be children friendly at this point. I have a little cousin no. who was like, you're a comedian. Tell me a joke. And I was like, I can't, you're not age appropriate. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, have no jokes for you. I have, I don't know. What did the dinosaur say to you? I don't have a punchline. I'm so sorry. Okay. Like, I don't know. So like, what is your, like, I don't know, like how did a clean comedy always come naturally to you? Do you feel like it's different than the other comedy you do? Like, what is your vibe about it? See, that's so sweet that you're saying I do clean comedy because I don't, but I can. You see, um, I do do clean comedy, obviously, because that's what I was doing with the children. But because I did a lot of pant, do you have pantomimes in America? I, is I'm that like rhymes? Sure. Like, I'm no, box. it's I, I would say it's vaudeville, but it's like, Oh, like um, nursery rhymes, like Cinderella. Uh, there you go. <laughs> no fairy tales, fairy tales. Cinderella, uh, Beanstalk, Jack and the Beanstalk. Those sort of things. Yeah, they're like theatre shows with for children, and it's all like high characters and stuff. So it's a big thing over here, and you, there's a lot of work involved with children, and so I used to do a lot of those as well. So I I learned how to deal with children on stage and stuff like that but you also have to keep the adults happy so you have to throw in you're playing to audience you have to be clean for the children and you have to be slightly above the children's heads but not too rude for the parents so so I, I did a lot of that and that's that's a bit of a skill a child told me I'll give you an example right this a child told me this joke uh, when I was working outside uh, at a garden centre and he said, how do you make a door laugh? And I, I went, I don't know. And he goes, tickle his knob. <laughs> <laughs> so like that's, to me, that's a little bit too <laughs> both audiences. But if that sort, that's, sort of, that, that's the sort of thing you have to sort of try and do, but without being too. Too brash, too on the, on the nose. Yeah, on the nose for that one, yeah. But it, it did, I did chuckle. That's so, so funny. but yeah, no, with, with, I, uh, I worked as well, a, a, a holiday camp in, uh, Butlin's holiday camp in, which is like summer season. Mm -hmm. And I was just doing technical, I was doing the lighting and, uh, two shows a day for six months of, of a variety of comedians, old school comedians and, and pantomimes and stuff like that. So all these jokes from the seventies are stuck in my head that I, I, I can't sort of, but I'm also, I don't know, I make them up with children. There's certain things you can say or do, but um, like uh, <laughs> if, I, if I met you and, and I'd say, what's your name? You'd say Haley. Mm -hmm. I might say something like no comment, right? Which is not even funny. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like- <laughs> I was thinking Haley's comment, comment I would be thinking of. So yeah. I would try and find, you see, it's easier if I've got somebody named that I can do a better joke with. <laughs> no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Even like without the layer of um, the like comment, right? Like no comment indicates like some type of feeling yeah. that you're not expecting for a response for your name. Yes. What's wrong with my name? You know what I mean? So it's, it's perfect. <laughs> Steve, you have been absolutely wonderful to chat with. Um, where where can the people find more of you? Well, uh, yeah. Well, um, Hen Nights on Facebook. 
uh, with two N's, H-E-N-N, Hen Nights, Steve Hen on Facebook, and uh, that, and Her Majesty's uh, Tax Office, probably. Her Majesty's uh, Tax Office. It, it'd be yeah. So, but yeah, Steve Hen, put Steve Hen anywhere, and you should find me two N's. Perfect. Uh, yeah, That's and it. all of that will be in the description as well. So if you're like driving heavy machinery, if you're doing brain surgery and listening to this as a podcast, you can continue what you're doing and look in the description after those very important uh, tasks. I'll put um, all his information in the description. And if you want more of me, Haley Hackett, you can follow me on Instagram at Haley Hackett Talks. And if you want more good talks with good people, which I know you do, you can also follow us on Instagram at Good Talk With. Um, well, thank you, Steve, so much for coming on. This has been a good talk. It's a pleasure, Haley. I've really enjoyed myself. And it's always a pleasure meeting and talking to you.